Hello everyone, I'm Chizen Roy, retail trainer from Bojokari School on the Sibin Group and today I'm going to cover the first chapter of retail of uh, basically it is related to it class 9 and I hope it will be it will be beneficial to all the students of retail. Uh, introduction to retailing under which I'm going to cover basics of retailing, organized and unorganized retailing, store and non-store retailing and Indian and global retailers very briefly. So uh, basically um, to begin with retailing in India uh, retailing is the second largest industry in, uh, in terms of providing employment right after agriculture and then um, it is the fifth largest industry in India. So uh, earlier we used to go and still we go to shops uh, which are nearby our homes and buy materials for our daily use but this method is becoming day by uh, is becoming very uh, you know different in our day to day lives nowadays because nowadays we are covering it through uh, departmental stores convenience stores supermarkets hypermarkets and everything so um, why has there been an increase in this hypermarkets uh, supermarkets and we are buying through all these mediums it is because basically uh, there has been increase in the standard of living. Uh, there has been a need increase in the need of products and services. Uh, also, there has been um, uh, increase in the competition of products and services, the quality of products and services, and thus uh, retailing is growing in terms of, um, you know, the departmental stores and convenience stores, etc. So, beginning with the basics of retailing, I would like to begin with saying that retailing, retail, the word retail comes from the French word retailer. Retailer meaning to cut a piece off or to break off or to divide. Okay, it is actually uh, the word coming from the tailor's place who, uh, you know, cut the cloth into smaller pieces and then they join it with other clothes to make the final product. So retailer comes from the word basically, re retail comes from the word retailer in French. It's an old French word and then uh, it means to basically break off from the bulk. So uh, coming to breaking the bulk, that is one of the main functions of retailing. Now breaking the bulk means to break off from the large lot so the large lot is something which is very uh, very large in size and thus it cannot be provided to the customers as per their needs so we need to provide them in terms of their needs in terms of their uh, requirement which is in smaller quantities and thus we have the middlemen and the retailers who provide these retailing uh, goods in smaller quantities from the producers who actually provide the retailers with the larger bulk. So the retailers, one of the main jobs of the retailers is to break the bulk into smaller quantities and then to provide it to the customers as per their need, as per the time, as per the place. The second most important function of the retailer is to uh, provide the right information regarding the products and services which they are selling. Okay, which means that what kind of products they are selling, what is the composition of the product, what is the ingredient of the product, what are the features of the product, what brands are available. So these are the important features and then the services which they provide, what kind of services, what kind of uh, after sales services which may be required. So these are the other um, very important function of a retailer. Thirdly, um, retailers are supposed to provide services of the products which they offer. Some products come with after sale services also. For example, if we buy a computer and then we need to install it, which we won't be able to do it on our own, some of us. So we need the help of the retailer to install the computer. So in terms of that uh, matter, the retailer is going to provide us with after sale services and then they are going to come to our homes and then install the computer. Furthermore, they might install a uh, install an antivirus also, which will be uh, very much required for the computer's functioning. And then uh, in other stores, there might be gift wrapping facilities, credit facilities to the uh, customers, and also 
Um, there might be other uh, facilities like free home delivery to the customers. These are the services which is required by the customers and may be provided by the retailer as one of the important functions of the retailer. And then the next function of a retailer would be to provide a pleasant, convenient and a comfortable environment for shopping for the retailer for the sorry for the customers because uh, as you may have noticed that a shop which is very comfortable to shop in which has a very pleasant environment has more customers in it so thus um, how can we make this environment comfortable and convenient is by providing soft music proper lighting uh, and then by providing enough space to walk for the customers so that there is enough movement for the customers to make and thus um, they will be very much encouraged to shop in that shopping environment. Also the uniform of the employees should be neat and tidy, they should be pleasant okay and then and then they'll be able to uh, you know attract the customers to come into the shop and then do the shopping. And also another important feature of the uh, feature as in the function of the retailer is to provide appropriate service to the customers. Appropriate service in terms of uh, after sales service as I've already mentioned before. However, this after sales services is also very important in terms of providing service, service product also. Okay, so, uh, product may not be only in terms of tangible product but of intangible in nature also. So in terms of that also the services should be provided very appropriately. Okay, this is about the basics of retailing and next I would like to cover organized and unorganized retailing in a very brief manner again. So organized retailing and unorganized retailing from the word itself we can understand that organized is something which has a lot of infrastructure, lot of funding, lot of technology involved. Uh, in terms of legal matters, it is well, uh, you know, um, adapted. And then in terms of uh, drawing the customers, they are scientifically and very well managed. So in terms of unorganized retailing, again, unorganized retailing is something which is not properly funded, which is which does not have proper technology which does not have uh, proper infrastructure, it is not um, legally sound, okay. So an example of organized retailing would be our very own big bazaars, then uh, pantaloon stores, um, then um, reliance trends, okay. All these marts are examples of organized retailing because they are very well equipped in terms of infrastructure, they are well funded, then uh, Technologically also they are sound. However, unorganized retailing, now you must have been able to make, make that out that unorganized retailing uh, examples are those which we have in terms of uh, mandis, hearts, melas, okay. So these are in terms of unorganized retailing and these both coexist with each other and make shopping an experience for the customers. But gradually, we are turning more into organized sector and unorganized sector is diminishing gradually okay because organized sector is providing more in terms of gdp to the nation okay so that's why organized retailing is more uh, um, you know in trend nowadays and next we come to store and non store retailing now store and non store retailing again from the word itself we can understand that store retailing means something which has, uh, you know, um, a physical outlet or a physical place from where the products can be sold. Whereas non-store retailing is something in which there is no physical store or there is no brick and concrete to sell off the products. I'll explain this gradually. So firstly, store retailing can be explained in terms of uh, in terms of ownership of the store and then in terms of the merchandise which they are offering. Okay. So firstly, in terms of ownership, in terms of ownership, there is independent retailer, 
then there is uh, franchising, then there is uh, consumer cooperatives, then there is uh, you know other forms of retail retailing, and thus uh, in terms of firstly to begin with, um, you know the first store retailing is independent retailer which is run usually run by a sole proprietor or a family member with the help of their family members or other assistants and then uh, they usually fund their own business and they run on in in terms of their own convenience okay then secondly we have this franchising you must have all heard about mcdonald's pizza hut okay so these are all examples of franchising so franchising is something where a company that is the franchiser gives some rights to the franchisee which is the store owner and then they uh, you know uh, give the products to the customers as per the um, guidelines of the owner that is the franchiser okay and then we have consumer cooperatives which are open when customers are not happy with what they are seeing with their retailers okay and then uh, next one is the retail uh, retail store based on merchandise offered okay based on merchandise offered we have convenience stores convenience stores are stores which from the name you can understand they sell products of convenience like bread butter eggs okay and then we have hypermarkets supermarkets an example of hypermarket is big bazaar all right and then we have uh, departmental stores okay so these are all examples of store retailing now we come to non store retailing in terms of non store retailing there is um, telemarketing then there is uh, direct response marketing and then there is multi level marketing okay so multi level marketing uh, basically the concept is to directly meet with the customers have a direct contact and then uh, you know sell the products it will be on the basis of commission when you appoint people under you or it may be on the basis of just sales uh, return okay so non store retailing does not involve a proper physical store where the products are sold by uh, having the customers come into the store but it is rather sold through emails or you know direct coming in direct contact with the customers or through telemarketing and then telemarketing might involve through television or through telephones also okay uh, this is it about store and non store retailing next we come to indian and global retailers um i'm sure with the upcoming so many malls and so many uh you know shops around you must be aware of so many indian retailers there is um this rk reheja group so, uh, rk reheja group uh, then um Aditya Birla group they are the most famous they are running uh, they are having the uh, rights of uh, sale for um, you know pantaloons and also for uh, forever 21 in india and then um, then there is a uh, lot of other indian retailers like uh, uh, which run businesses like trend then um, then we come to global retailers global retailers you all have heard about walmart which is the most famous international hypermarket then you must have heard about target corporation uh, walmart is the largest of all the international or the global retailers it was started by sam walton and then uh, we have target corporation then we have care for uh, and then a uh, lot of collaborations between a lot of international uh, subsidiaries as well which form the global retailers okay so this is it of the uh, first chapter of introduction to retailing uh, i hope the session was useful thank you